Some people say I got the PhDs the easy way, and others will say, oh, no, <laughs> you have no clue. And I do feel like a mama bear. Um, thank you so much for inviting me out here. I know you guys have been struggling for years. I know you've been working really hard. Uh, Teresa certainly keeps me up to date on all of the stuff that's happening here and across all of Ohio and West Virginia and Pennsylvania and all the, Alabama, um, all the other places she's charged with um, doing doing work with CHEJ. I want to I want to not talk at you for an hour because I think that would just be terribly exciting but might not give you what you need. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about and, and I have to say that when John came up, where'd you go John? No. When he came up and said he went to this hearing, I mean, it's just it just it just makes me crazy. You don't make me crazy John. The hearings make me crazy. <laughs> Um, because so often what we do as a society, what we do in our struggles is we follow their rules. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen, their rules are defined, their home rules. They get to define them and they are defined to beat us back. And so meeting after meeting in Ohio and North Carolina, California, wherever, I hear the same things. We went there, but we weren't able to speak. Really? We have freedom of speech in this country. We have a democracy. We have a right to speak. No, we do. They tell us we don't. They tell us we need to do this. Baloney. I'm in a church. I'm not going to cuss. Um, so, so, and I know it's a Unitarian church, and they've been great supporters of our work, and we, we love them to death, and, and, and they don't, I'm, 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 uh, I, I was born and raised a Catholic, so now you all understand, right? <laughs> um, but, but I want to I wanna talk about organizing, and I really want to talk about how to win this, and, and how to get rid of those false ideas and sense of who gets to control what? This is our country, period. Yes, it's controlled by the corporations, yes. I'm not gonna deny that. But our role here is to take it back. And not just take it back for all of you because you're being poisoned or about to be poisoned or, or some combination there in between. We have to take it back for our children and our grandchildren. Because it's going this way. It's going this way. It is becoming more and more controlled by a small number of, you could say people, but essentially corporations that the people own. One percent. So, so I want to talk about how do we take our country back? Darn it, this is my country. This is my country. And nobody has a right. Now, there's a constitution. It says, John, when you go there, you have the right to speak. That is a public hearing. That is a public meeting held by people who are in office because of you and everyone else in Ohio who elected them or the elected appointed them. However it worked, those people work for you. You don't work for them. And, and I think we really have to, okay, I won't be radical. We really have to think about what we're doing. And, and are we reacting? They do this, so we do this, they do that, and we do this. It's a nice dance, but you can't dance 24-7. We have to stop reacting. Stop reacting to what they do. We are having a hearing. Everybody write comments and run down there and give your comments a hearing. No. No. We need to play outside of the box, outside of the rules. Because when you do that, right now, each and every one of you, including the media in the back of the room, is predictable. They know what's going to be on TV tonight. They know what's going to be in the newspaper tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They know what you're going to do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You're all predictable. And so they have their little map. And their map says, if we do this, they'll do that. They actually hire sociologists to figure this out because they're too stupid to observe their own stuff, right? <laughs> Most of them. So if you continue to react, and, and there is some reaction you have to do, I'm not, I'm not suggesting we don't react at all. 
But if you continue to only react, you cannot win. Whether it's a ballot initiative or a ban or something else, you cannot win. It's their rules, their platform, their game. This is house poker. And guess what? They have the poker face. And you guys are crying. You got a bad hand. And they see you crying because you have a bad hand. So, so we need to think about that. So the way we're going to think about that is I'm going to first tell you a little bit about where I come from. I know most of you know Love Canal in some capacity. But I'm going to tell you a little bit of where, where, where I come from and, and how we got where we did. We were working class people. 80% of my neighborhood worked in the industry. Occidental Petroleum, Goodyear Chemical, Dunlop Tires. Name, it, name a chemical factory, 80% of our community worked in that factory. 20,000 tons of chemicals in the center of our neighborhood put there by that same chemical industry. Now, if you were to believe the rhetoric that our friends, our, our not so friend friends put out there, is that people are concerned about jobs more so than the environment. And people will do whatever they do to protect the job or take the job. I'm here to tell you that's just not true. People need to work, yes. When do you bite the hand that feeds you? When it's feeding you poison. Okay? So, if you were to believe their rhetoric, and they kept putting it out there, then we would have never won Love Canal because our families all worked in the industry that we were fighting. Not only that, but every single union, every single union, and there were many more back then, there was Oil and Chemical Atomic Workers, there was the United... Um, Car, car people, United Auto Workers, <laughs> the car people. There was the AFL CIO. There are all of these unions, the teachers' unions. I mean, unions that you wouldn't even think were associated with this, who joined us. Why did they join us? They joined us because they realized if we were being poisoned and the workers were being poisoned, there's commonality there. There's some commonality there, and we need to stand together in this commonality. And no one's going to get fired because they're speaking out because the union's going to protect the workers, and we are going to protect the workers' family because the workers lived in the communities that are being exposed. The problem with fracking and injection wells is the vast majority of workers don't live here. They don't live here. They don't go to school here. They aren't part of your community. And in fact, they're transients for all intents and purposes. They might be here for a short while. So, so in this case, you know, trying to get together with the workers is not a good idea, right? This is not a good idea. So I'm not trying to assess, suggest that. So at Love Canal, so we are, we are chemical worker families. My husband worked at Goodyear Chemical. It worked shift work. 3 to 11, 11 to 7, 7 to 3. And when we moved in, you know, we, like you, just had our little American dream. We had our little house and our picket fence and our HBO, and we had a pool table. We put a top on it for Thanksgiving dinner, and it was our dinner table. We were just regular folk, right? With the American dream. And I really believed at the ripe age of 27, because that's how old I was back then, that I had achieved that American dream. Because I had a whole lot more than my mama and daddy had when they were my age. So no one told me about Love Canal. No one told me there was a dump three blocks from my home. No one told me the elementary school that my children would attend, my son did attend, kindergarten, was on the perimeter. No one told me. And as my child kept on getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker, I kept taking him to the pediatrician saying, what is wrong? And the pediatrician had no answers. And when your children get sick from drinking the water in this delicious coffee today and nasty coffee tomorrow, you're going to run up against the same thing. Because the pediatricians don't know and no one knows. 
And if you even, and those of you in Pennsylvania certainly know, um, when you drink that 